The sweet satisfaction of a game well completed. Delicious. I mean, assuming we get through. I'm hoping... <laughs> Excuse me, it could be dicey, but... but... Oh, God. Excuse me. Volume we should be able to get all there. the way up. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Yeah. As far as I know, we've just landed at the island. Yeah. I think we can make it today. Okay. I'm just gonna not click on as many things. <laughs> Everyone loves that part of the game, right? Mm -hmm. No mm -hmm. one. No one needs flavor or context as a reward. Like. Get, getting getting our objectives complete is is its own reward. Skip the flavor text, Dave. Yeah, yeah. Just keep running. Got to get that that hustle on. Mm -hmm. we're, we're a hustler and a grinder. The dry grass crackles under your feet as you stop. Far away, birds' wings touch the still surface of the sea. The flock of quail departs. Now more than a hundred meters away, a hundred and two. A hundred and five. I'm not that good at gauging distances. On the islet, I... there is almost no wind, just the light movement of air through the reeds. Bulrushes swaying on the waterline, long dried leaves chafing against each other. I love the little snippets into Harry's competencies, right? That That's basically the entire point of the game, right? Yeah. Is that we have, we are the ghost of an extremely competent person. Yes. In the ghost of a culture mm -hmm. and world, frankly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A, a, a city devastated by civil war mm -hmm. that has not recovered and might not recover mm -hmm. and a world that is being sublimated away mm -hmm. by its own weight of thought. Like the distances between things are going to be so extreme that it will be impossible for them to like communicate and interact. It's like we're talking like space distances. Yeah. It's basically, you know, heat death. Yeah. The, um, you know, it's, it's like poetry. It rhymes, right? <laughs> the insurmountable distances between people is mirrored in the universe or in the game universe. Mm hmm. And I definitely really like that about the game. Mm -hmm. Um, like the clothing that Zom makes, mm -hmm. uh, includes stat bonuses right on the tag yeah. to tell you what stat bonuses it offers. And I believe, um, what do Kim say? Let me just look it up here. Um, yeah, uh, Kim has an alternate jacket that offers interfacing, but also something called Voltal Damar, Volta Damar, um, which is completely uncommented on. Um, his, his plus four trousers uh, improve interfacing and kinetic damage. Dope. Those are not skills that we have, right? We have interfacing, we have hand-eye coordination with his other, which his other jacket offers, mm -hmm. but it remains, uh, th th there is an incompatibility there, right? Or a translation occurring across people. Not everyone has the same skill tree. Mm-hmm. So they might have similarities, which I like. It it suggests a kind of like fundamental inability to resolve human differences. <laughs> I like uh, Lysander Salamander asking if the incredibly rich fellow bending space time was a hallucination, and it's like no, it's not because in this world, something like your your monetary value can affect physics. Yeah. So like, like the, the, the infra-communists like trying to hold up matchboxes with their brain aren't wrong. Yeah, there is a there there, although how it manifests is um, a bit elusive. 
Mm -hmm. Like Kim did just see the ultra high uh, self self worth person as yeah. a man in a suit. But it has to do with your difference in wealth. Yes. Yes. So hobo cop here is just so completely separate from a, a high net worth individual that he can see he, he, the, I guess, the distortion is visible. Yes. Yeah. That we're across some kind of threshold, not only from the extreme high net worth individual, but from Kim. Mm hmm Even though you would think that uh, the difference between somebody who's surviving on a middle class income and someone who is um, uh, putting all of the middle class income into a bottle and then putting that into us uh, would not be that large, right? Compared to that kind of wealth. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, compared to Jeff Bezos, uh, me and a millionaire are not really fundamentally that different. That's same. That's exactly yeah. it. Yeah. Like a silent orchestra tuning at the beginning of some major work. A silent hiss, sea air moving through the needles of a pine tree. The faraway roar of the city, distant like today's dream. Before it, the sound of sand, the low tide filtered through its grains, a bird tending to its feathers. A low hum. The air slowly moves through a concrete box, through its ancient slits and cracks, resonating, hollow, a big building. Air flows out of a pillbox window. There is very little there. The air cossets flowers on a meadow. Absolute silence. Reeds motionless. Bulrushes motionless. Call the Mama Dakwa. <gasps> we heard it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> I mean, speaking of reality warping experiences, as we close in on the resolution to the mystery, um, we become more, I guess, sensitive to these things, or more things just appear to us or are called to us. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, spoilers, this is a fully spoiled stream, but like the Phasmid, right? The Phasmid has its own agency that it's that it's doing right now. Yep. But we are permitted to perceive it as we detect more clearly. Hmm. Uh, Gehenna Reborn, I didn't see or hear anything about a Game Boy D-Make. That sounds uh, yes. awesome. Yes, they mentioned it to me the other day. I uh, need to check that out because that sounds quite interesting. Mm hmm. It's, uh, it's a lot of the game isn't revolutionary. Mm -hmm. It it is it fits within the pattern of like pointy clicky tactics games that have existed for like 30 years or games where you like wander around and interact with things like a this point and game, click adventure game. I think this game could have been made in the text adventure era. Yeah. With some, you know, some loss in vision, but I think mm -hmm. this would not have been impossible to make that. But I think the thing that's really interesting is that it rewards you with lore, basically, instead of like necessarily winning fights or like you get these moments where you get to attempt something abnormal i guess and sometimes the failure you get is like a choose your own adventure failure where it's just like you slept in the garbage and now everyone's sad <laughs> <gasps> but the the other failures are just like they they still expand your understanding of the world and your place in it which is just really lovely it's like you don't get the XCOM 97% miss mm. although I saw, saw an interesting thread the other day on Twitter about the XCOM 99% miss mm -hmm. um, 
And one of the solutions I liked was that you, on those extreme feel bads, uh, we'll say you miss, but the enemy departs and will come back later, stronger. Like oh, the nemesis in future missions. system. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. A, he's a nemesis system for that kind of thing. Right, yeah. so that there is still an interesting result for failing on those kinds of odds. But, you know, if you set up a 99% chance hit, you have probably invested significant resources over a couple of turns to line up that shot. So instead of making it a game over on a dice chucking, let's make something interesting happen. Mm -hmm. Which I thought was neat. You know, it's only a requirement for, oh, probably only like half an hour of dev time for that kind of system. Probably, so that's, yeah. that's something I'm comfortable asking. And there's like, it, you can just use existing voice lines and stuff and animations. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. totally fine. Yeah, camera system. I'm sure the camera system in XCOM can do it. Yeah. It's always perfect. And... Or, like, I mean, there's a million reasons why a soldier would miss a point-blank shot like that. And I think there's an interesting narrative possibility there. They turned completely 180 and fired in the wrong direction. Come on, Cameron, what more do you want? Yeah, yeah, right. But wouldn't it be interesting if your soldier was like, no, I recognize some kind of humanity across this gulf, and I'm not going to pull the trigger. Love on the battlefield? Yeah. Oh. Mm. My response to that thread was uh, making the failure uh, a result of like an ability proccing on the enemy makes Ooh. it feel less like it's my fault. It's like yeah. it, it's it's my fault if I miss with this, with a five percent chance to miss. But if there's a five percent chance for the enemy to block, that's not my fault. Yep. I mean, a parry feels bad, but it feels like something that is, yeah, it feels a lot better. Yeah, but if you combine that with the nemesis thing and you do a mm -hmm. cutscene where the enemy is just like, <laughs> eat dick, like. Mm -hmm. But then I'm just like, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. Yeah. I get mad at the enemy instead of myself or my characters. Yep. Mm. Anyway, hire us. <laughs> we can just throw out ideas all, oh, yeah. all day. With yeah. Experience zero consequences for any of the things <sighs> that we say. Honestly, we should be like studio heads. Just put us in a room with a whiteboard. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We'll just sit around, like, come into meetings with a, a laptop and show people funny videos we found online. Oh yeah, and just be like super high level. Okay, we want the game to be fun. All mm -hmm. right, go find the fun. Yep. Oh, I just heard about this new game. I would like you to implement several systems from it. I was talking to the people at Real Big Fish or whatever, and they were like, "You have to have 600 ED collectibles in your game if you want for mobile." So now you have to make 600 unique collectibles. Also a system to implement that. Can we, can we please get a system to implement that, someone? Okay. All right, I'm going to another conference. Types. See you guys in yes. 10 days. It's like, you have to have the demo ready for this, and I'm just going to go there and talk <laughs> to some other people and get some ideas. <laughs> you know what we need? Whales. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get things for the whales to spend money on. Extremely, uh, pl we don't call them whales. We want to call them uh, extreme high net worth gamers. No, we just call them whales. No, whale. Let's <laughs> call them whales. whales. Yeah. Yep. Gotta have, um, what is it? Spouts and drains for money. Mmm. Money sinks, yeah. And uh, if if you could just record everything that happens and then output a funny video or GIF uh, that people can share on social media, then that would be amazing. Like, just show yeah. them the funny thing. Yeah, absolutely.
Sometimes it's really good when a project gets canceled. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, small mercies. Small mercies, really. Sometimes you find yourself working on a thing and all of your design problems are disgusting. <laughs> You're just like, how do I attract the whales? Well, I guess I do this. Mm. <laughs> yes? Momentarily, the sounds are swept away. Uh -oh. Pain shoots up your right foot and into your groin. <laughs> it's really fucking silent on this island. It is. Is that why we are stopping? Sorry. <laughs> no more vacation. Taking my sword and boombox into this turret. Oh, great, great reception in here. Lie scattered on the floor and on a makeshift cupboard. They are not particularly well organized. Sift. Most are soft covers, serialized fantastique and detective stories from the 20s and 30s. This disparate digest includes the classic Animal Adventures. What's Animal Adventures? Among <gasps> what is mostly commercial fiction and serialized stories, you find a magazine cathodique for electrical engineering. Then it's back to pulp. Light erotica, an international thriller about circuit benders. Yeah. I'd read that. Someone's made themselves a home. <laughs> yeah, mm. communism paying off. All right. Not nope. Tell. This is a digest of someone who's dead bored. Most of it is for entertainment purposes. Fittingly, right next to the radiola on the floor. Nothing? Nothing out of the ordinary? Maybe it's a little old fashioned. There's a nude mag. More than that, you can't say. It's boring. Hmm. The print in some of these is pretty small, though. This person has good eyesight. <laughs> what a tiny detail. <laughs> that is a good, that, that is a good detail. Thanks, visual calculus. It's me, in the poster. The number of people that have the antlers and star tattoo, like, I know one person who has it, but I've seen mm. like four or five. Like, it's a very popular thing to, to get after playing this game. I can see it. Definitely. Mm, pills. I mean, that's that's a sign and signifier thing, right? You see a small metal door nested inside a larger one. A heavy steel blast door. There is a conventional keyhole above the handle. It's very small. What's on the other side? Another part of the island, probably. The lock looks like it could still be usable. How do we open this? Maybe this is one of the doors we don't open? Shut up! No such door! He's right. It would be better to open its big brother. A powerful engine hangs under the ceiling. It must control the blast door. I find us not opening it highly unlikely. All right, I retract my statement. It was naive. Let's look around and get it open. <laughs> He's learning. Green paint flicks off the monoblock aluminium cabinet. There are rows of switches on the front panel, a frequency band, and even a keyboard. Run your fingers across the keyboard. The keys Centrally. rattle like teeth. This keyboard hasn't been functional in decades. Who is it? Hmm. Featherweight or someone sent me a 
keyboard project for ceramic keycaps. And really? They sound amazing and look amazing. I, I probably will get some. Could you send me that link when you find it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do they have they have a sixty? Uh... Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, chat. Sorry, everybody. Uh, this is important. Yes, uh, teeth keycaps. That's it. Yes. No, not the doll. Huh. I like how we're ah. listening to just like a jungle station. Or is this more D and B? Drum and bass? Yeah. No, this isn't D and B. I think this is more jungle. I'm I'm not as up anymore on my electronic subgenres. There you go. Uh -huh. Oh, thank you. You can post that in chat too. Will do. What's all this then? The console of an antique computation device. There was a generator upstairs with wires coming out. They terminate here. Could this open the blast door? Possibly. Urgence, ouvert, allumé, radio diffusé. It sounds like this device was used to control the electronics here. Maybe it still does. I'm going to post it in chat, mods. Hmm. Resize my chip. Urgence, ouvert, allumé, radio diffusé. This device was used to control the electronics in the room. It could open doors, control lights, function as a radio computer. Emergency open! We need to restore power before using this officer. What? There was a generator that you missed. It didn't look like there was fuel in it. Industrial stomp. I am clockwork. Isn't stomp already industrial? We should look around outside. There are barrels all over. Maybe one of them still has something in it. The boat engine. Hmm. Yes. The console looks on as you talk. Under the stairs. More stuff. All right. Open the blast door. Find fuel. Could be fuel on the island. Can't remember if there's fuel out here or if I have to go back upstairs to a little shack thing full of drippy. I don't remember all oh, the noise these keycaps make is... Right? Like you can feel it in your teeth. It sounds like rain. Oh wait, was that up and around? Yes, because this is the bed. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, I am Clockwork suggests that it is industrial stomp, but extra industrial. I can see it. <laughs> Pain in my pelvis? More common than you think, after being shot in the junk. <laughs> there we go. Lum fuel canister. There's a rain-soaked mattress on a concrete slab only half covered by the crumbling roof. At the head of it, double embrasures, firing slits like two eyes in the wall. B triple prime. This looks like a good place to shoot from. Inspect mattress. A single person mattress, modern, civilian use. Brand name, Marjorie. There's a fuel stain on the cover, along with cigarette burns. 
Brand name Marjorie. It's a weird name for a mattress company. Yeah. And an empty mm. can of beans on the ground next to it, filled to the brim with cigarette butts. Beans, lots of beans. The silhouette of a tobacco picker adorns the paper filter. The brand, Tio Moteri. Tio Moteri, like the ones we found at Land's End. I may have been wrong when I said it wasn't important. Ha! This means the same person could have visited both locations. Eat it, Kim. I didn't see any signs of smoking inside, though. If people live there, to keep it tidy. This here may also be a smoking spot. Inspect the wall. There's a fire and slit in the wall in front of you, like a little window. <laughs> Arkham Archivist says you're never alone when you're sleeping with Marjorie. And that sounds like a reference to something, but I don't know what. But also, <laughs> that could definitely be the company's tagline. Yeah. Yeah. Quite old and grimy from years without cleaning by anything other than the rain. Oh no, to Emily, you're right. Marjorie sounds like the name of someone who got called mattress by mean kids in school. Marjorie the mat mattress. Everyone sleeps with her. The springs screech as you lean on the mattress and crane your neck to look out. Like being the school bicycle or Titanic trepidation a tingling feeling in your stomach a small piece of martinez coastline opens up in the square in front of you like a tiny landscape painting one kilometer across the water the ruins look familiar on the left a towering skyscraper its top floors shaved off by artillery fire capeside apartments rue de saint Gislaine, 33a and 33B. And on the right. The red chimney and collapsed back of the four story tenement in front of the whirling in rags. Rue de Saint Gislaine. 10. The doomed commercial area. And between the two. The box shaped silhouette of the whirling in rags. You see a small fleck of white on the rooftop. The upstairs window of Clasia's room. In the rain, reflecting light. And the wire. What does that mean? Do you have line of sight to the window? Yes. More than that. Kim, with a pair of binoculars, I would be able to see inside the room. A pair of binoculars? Or a scope of a rifle? You'd be prone, lying on the mattress, barrel resting on the embrasure. Cheek against the cheek rest, hand on the hair trigger, on a calm day like this. I don't want to boast. I think we have it. The <laughs> origin of the shot. This is the sniper's nest. Affirmative. Oh yeah, master cop work. It's only moderately effective cop work until we have the weapon. It will not be, how do you say it? Booyah? Until we have that. <laughs> Could the All shooter right. still be here? Where? Right here. You think so? We would see them if they were here. <laughs> Perhaps it's a... No, officer. It's not an invisible shooter. But this <laughs> end, on the other hand. <laughs> or she. We should move. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I love that... Um, the victim was a bad man objectively mm -hmm. who absolutely needed to face justice yeah and despite being executed by a political adversary in the course of carrying out a loathsome task he evaded justice he was not killed for the reasons that he sh should have been uh brought to justice for yeah just jealousy yeah and a really vile, like, pathetic kind of jealousy, too. That there is no justice here. Like, it's as dehumanizing still to Classia as all of the stuff uh, 
Lely would say. Yes. And all of the stuff the Hardys said. Yes. to break my pelvis. Nobody's gonna break my bones. Nobody's gonna slow me down. Already going slow. wiring running out of its side and across the floor. The cables disappear into the wall to your right. The lieutenant puts his hand on the metal barrel, checking for warmth. It's cold now, but someone has been maintaining it. The wiring has been repaired. Tap on the side. A hollow ring. The canister is empty. Dust falls from the generator and down into the ammo lift. Pour fuel into the tank. The lieutenant assists you, holding the canister up to the fuel tank as you tilt. Dark brown, viscous fluid pours out, and the room fills with a chemical smell. Mmm. There's a red starter switch on the side of the cylinder and a start rope on the other side. The lieutenant flicks the switch. Hold the rope! The recoil start wakes the old generator up. The machine sputters like an old war horse before settling down to a rattle. That should do it. Sweet. dim golden glow animates the console. Faint, like a ghost light. Ujans over reads one dial key. Allume reads another. It's on. Turn emergency open. Automatic boot. Turn emergency open! The blast door opens with a series of clicks. Ooh. A shaft of light appears, then animation as the light shines in. Outside, when we were walking across the sand, I felt someone watching me. So did I. Not back there, but I felt it since we came here. What if we get in another fight? Don't worry. I have a gun. I also have a gun. I know. It was not easy to acquire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I would have to get these keycaps in white. Like the armor. Hmm. And you could like flick them and they go ting. Yep. I would flick them and probably go, ow, my fingernail. Mm hmm. Like crocodile board. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Or like um, in Destiny 2, Drifter has that jade coin <laughs> that he flicks with his finger. Yeah. Um, and a couple of years ago at PAX, Bungie had those as like uh, merch. Yeah. Basically, or is it is is a, a thing? Only theirs are made out of um, face hardened steel instead of jade. You're just like, bring a sword. Yeah. 
flick and your fingernail immediately turns black and blood sprays across the wall. <laughs> I think we have to amputate. <laughs> yeah. You wake up on the floor half a second later, your face is covered in tears and snot. <laughs> a crowd of concerned onlookers. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, guarding him down, and then one of the one of the staff members is just like eyes up, guardian, and then shuffles you yep. <laughs> into the recovery zone. Like, you know, there was the bowl where they were handing them out, and then in a circle around it, there were just a ring of fingernails. <laughs> right as everyone picked it up, made it roughly the same number of steps, and then attempted it. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> you did this. Oh. Okay, speaking of Bungie and their displays, they always have like the um, Omelon stuff, and I, mm -hmm. I want to drink the fluid. Yeah. I want to crack open yeah. a cold one. Yeah, what's in that? What's in the magazine? Tell us, Bungie. Will it make me powerful? <laughs> Is it Baja Blast? I bet it's Baja Blast. An old man wearing tracksuit trousers. <laughs> Should we put away our <laughs> No, it's too late. I already engaged. A big ball of spit in his mouth. Ah, yes. Good. Oh, it muted the, it. Yeah, the game's not going to let me ruin the tone. <laughs> then spits it out into the extinguished fire before him. He raises his black eyes, hooded by creased eyelids to meet yours. Unclouded by cataracts, his eyesight is sharp. Uh, you've retained your eyesight. My eyesight? <clears throat> yes, helps me see all the shit. They changed his voice. Yeah. He sounds l less bastardy. Yeah, a little sharper. Mm hmm. Um. Did you close the blast door? I did. And you opened it. How? I fueled the generator, then used the console. I should have burned that console down. How did you know I was coming? Reactionary rock and roll music. Playing on the water. And everywhere on the island. <laughs> Told you we shouldn't play sad FM. It's not rock and roll, it was sad FM. Sad FM, huh? I always hated that station. Phlegmatic counter revolutionary dirges. Sadness is a mental illness. A weapon of the bourgeoisie. The fascists were right about rock and roll. It is degenerate. Hip gyrating mental illness music. Nice gun you got there. I got one too. It's not nice. It's a piece of shit. But it gets the job done. Is that a Bell McGrave? It's a triangong. 446. Dinger! A Samaron rifle. How did you get hold of one? It was sent to us by our brothers in the Sinyao commune. Military aid. If that stay true to him, he can still make it sing. The Sinyao commune? You heard me. <sighs> it's good now. Like chalk wiped from the ball. Uh, your weapon stayed true to you. Mine stayed true to me also. Yes. I bet you've killed a lot of people with it. You fascist fuck. Me? Have you come to make me one of them? His right eye twitches. With what? Fear? Rage? We have come to ask you questions. Nothing more. 
If you do not comply, we will take you in. Do you understand? Um. Seven? Yeah. Just you can keep the gun, but put it down, or keep it down. Yeah. Yeah. We're just here to talk. Just talky time. No. Put it down now, sir. Or you're gonna blow my brains out before you question me. To hell with it. It's a walking stick anyway. It's out of bullets. He stares on, his wrinkled mouth moving without a sound. A strange sadness, like a song. Uh, what was that? Sorry, what did you say? Huh? Mm -hmm. The future teaches you to be alone. Huh. Hmm. 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 The present. The present? The present to be afraid and cold. Those words. Real music. Real brilliant cult. That's La Reva Chaulier. Not your rock and roll misanthropy. Chanson de soldat of the black and whites. Hmm. You need to address that remark. <laughs> I'll excuse murder, but not dissing disco. Mm hmm. Two? What's La Reve Chalier? Or should yeah. I be like. Stop making fun of me! <laughs> it is the anthem of the world revolution. One of three. In Grad, they sang brave children, favorites of history. And in Sinyao, it was. some Samaran shit, I guess. How does it go, the song? How did it go? Something about shooting rabbits. I don't know. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. It's gone now. He waves erratically with his hand, annoyed that he can't remember. A little tremor passes through him. Hmm. It's kind of like the stuff with Tiago in the mm. church. Or oh. he's completely forgotten his past and so now it just kind of exists in the present. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's kind of like the, the fun theory of mind and personality stuff that they cover in Severance. Mm hmm. That, yeah, well, it, I mean, ex literally, exposure to the pale will alienate you from, from everything. Um, but. Yeah, the... Why that metaphor? Right? Why use that metaphor? Um, I'm, I'll get back to it. Let me think about that. I like it, though. It was dear to him. He resents forgetting it. You gotta pick up the gun. His gaze follows your motions. The rifle feels surprisingly light in your hand. Frame stopped and patched in places with tape and wire. Inspect. The rifle's in a shabby state, like a crutch that's seen too much travel. Hieroglyphs are embossed into the forearm, made of walnut. On the butt, you see Vespertine writing, burnt into the wood. Triangon, 4.46 millimeter, made in Sinyao. This uses jacketed ammunition 4.46. The right type and the right calibre. <laughs> calibre. Oh, Ooh. fancy French word, Kim. <laughs> wow. Hmm. Go to the Santra Le Theatre. 
He's liking this. Stowed again. The old man keeps following your motion with his gaze. His right arm twitches suddenly. Some kind of involuntary response. Something is slightly off with his motorex. This looked very much like the murder weapon. It could be used against him to get a confession in time. So, who are you? My name is Josef Lilianovich Dross. Political Commissar, the 114th Anti-Aircraft Division of the 4th Army of the Commune of Revachol. I am a deserter, a partisan, and a prisoner of war. This is my term of surrender. I guess he's also kind of a bit of a, a foil for Rene, who also has never let in the war go. Yes. Yes. But still values a lot of the memory and social stuff from that time. Yeah, who who takes pride in his military virtues. Mm -hmm. Um the discipline and pageantry and glory. Or not even glory for Renee, but dignity. Honor, yeah. Yeah. The Commune of Revachol? Do you mean the ICM? You're a holdover from the from the Insul Indian Citizens Militia, the Army of the Revolution. I was recruited in Jamrock in 07, trained in the Ecole de Contrôle Orion, and consigned to emergency defense duties in 08. I left my unit on the eve of the landing. When I returned here on May 14th, the commune had fallen, still armed, and ideologically trained. I wrote a criticism of myself and resumed partisan duties. 51 minus 8 equals 43. How long have you been on the island? 43 years. No, I've been on other islands too. I was an resurrection until they turned it into a spa in 18. Then I was an E-48, a nameless sound, until the sea washed over it. Then I came back here. That was 22 years ago. So you're a communist soldier from the communist army? No, I am not a soldier. I am an ideological officer. I belong to the party, not to the army. But you said you were trained and assigned to the Defense Corps. Trained in historical materialism, then assigned as a political commissar by the party. These things used to mean something. What does a political commissar do? The old man does not answer. He tilts his silver head and looks at the reeds. You see a small tremor pass through his legs. His job was to assure the army answers to civilian control and follow the ideology of the commune. Scientific communism. A commissaire politique is a knight philosopher of the revolution, a future human. Awakened from shutdown by the promise of ideology, means you're a trained communist, right? He nods slowly. Then, another tremor. I am also a communist. No, you're not. <coughs> you're a liberist. You should engage him about inframaterialism. Impress him with all the ideas you picked up from the reading group. Yeah. No, you mm. don't. This man does not subscribe to intellectual daydreams. The communism he mourns is a planetary force. Hmm. Liberast? A liberal and a pederast. It's what most liberals are. <laughs> what a fun portmanteau you created. Mm-hmm. I told 
to have a communist? Detective, we have not come here to discuss ideology. We have come to ask questions regarding a murder investigation. The old man spits into the fire pit. He's got a lot he of spit. He does not say anything more. A jitter passes his lower body. The expression on his face is unreadable. There's some sort of interference there. Neurological. Mm. How have you concealed yourself all these years? It was hard in the Thames. I didn't have partisan training. They were searching for stragglers, those bloodhounds. Floodlights on the water at night. There were posters, campaigns. We communards still hoped, and they needed to snuff that hope out. The East capitulated. Martinez and Cold City were turned to dust. But Jamrock, Forberg, even Coron, and Boogie Street, of course. Those fucking kips had Marsoff coursing through their veins. And others, too. Some cordons of Revachol were still fighting. There were cells. I tried to contact them. Soon they all went silent. The frequency's dead. How did you get between here and the mainland? At night. I used a dinghy. I only went after dark then. When I got to the city, I stayed underground. Patrols. You lot. The commons, too. They'd started snitching. In the city, you move underground? From bunker to bunker. Not anymore. No one cares now. I don't even have to hide. They think I'm another antisocial vagrant. I could walk straight into that town if I wanted. I just... Hmm. Hmm. Have you been to the weapons cache? So you finally found it. There must have been a small squadron's worth of arms in there. Elmer Graves, right? They were? Useless now. Rusted away. So you've been there? Sleeping. <coughs> Some nights. Ammo scrounging on others. Those McGraves were shit, even before they corroded. Some had bullets in the chamber, however. Not a great place to store them. You feel the dots connecting. Little dots on the map he's walked across. There's a small bunker under the Feld building. Have you stayed there? The propaganda bunker. <laughs> I used to, but not anymore. Propaganda bunker? They stored leaflets there. Broadcasting equipment, too. Made broadcasts, I think. Propaganda officers. I buried them with their leaflets. They killed themselves. Two young boys. Uh-huh. A lot of our boys did. I spent some winters there. Never liked it. Kept thinking of them. No need to go underground anymore. It's better in the ruins on the ground. One more thing. Do you smoke Tiamutri cigarettes? I do. <coughs> Ever smoke them on the mainland? They're good. Plenty of tar. I like that boy on the pack, too. Reminds me of the last century. Tell me another thing. The old man looks across the water at the city, the ruins, the motorways rising above it. You said this is your termless surrender. You're with the RCM, the coalition appointed mob that enforces bourgeois morals in Revachol. Mm. Mm. Hmm. Is it too late to score communism points? <laughs> Who are we trying to impress? Me. Yeah, no, fair. So, yeah, we're with the RCM. No big deal. Let. You represent the Moralist International, the enemies of humanity who took this city. I represent their adversary, Le Parti Communiste dans ce monde. We're at break time. We Shall are. Shall we put this down and then come back? 
Yeah, I mean, we can we can we can break here with not lose anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a quick break, chat. Uh, break for us, break for you, perhaps. Stretch, get a glass of water, relieve yourself the same, and remember, uh, take your meds? Question mark? If you've forgotten? At least posture check. Hmm. Mm. I'm gonna go take my vitamin. Hmm. All right. Be right back. All right. The ads have completed. So I'm back. How you doing, chat? You get through all your stuff? Apparently not. Yeah, good. Yes. Oh man, Beowulf. I would love to be more couch than person. Uh, just sitting immobile months on end. Ah, uh, like finally I could sleep. <laughs> I return. Oh, I'm back. Thank you. Roast Beef Sandwich says we should play Vampire in the Masquerade, The Night Road. In the future. Oh. I haven't played that one. I've played a bit of one of the werewolf games and the Coteries of New York, I think. Okay. But I haven't, I haven't done that one. I also haven't played Bloodlines. Is it, is it one of the Telltale ones? Or Telltale alike? ones this one's text only oh interesting hmm. I and mean, this is the stream for reading stuff other than the other streams that are for reading stuff yes mm -hmm. all right Take me to them as a prisoner of war. I have relinquished my weapon. I can no longer serve. No superiors can relieve me of my duty. You bulldoze them all to a mass grave for trying to free humanity. <laughs> a spray of blood from his mouth on the black charcoal in the fire pit. We all know what that means. Hmm. It's like a lady throwing up in a, in a movie. Ladies can cough blood, too. Yeah. But the significance... The royalist on the coast said... You never signed the Revolutionian instrument of surrender? Only the army. Liberal reactionaries signed it for them. Traitors who should have been burned alive. I am a political commissar of the Communist Party, and the party never surrendered. Is that part of why you've been here all this time? Because the party didn't surrender? Probably. He just wipes the blood from his chin. <laughs> Okie doke. I don't think you did. You live in a delusion. Radio shows, speed racing, and sporting goods. It's not real. Hey, speed racer's real. <laughs> And my just friend. said speed racer isn't real. What? Nani? <laughs> oh, speed. Uh, mm. 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 Oh, speed indeed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am a speed racer. Yes. Uh, you've been hiding here for 43 years? 43 years and 10 months length of my entire life it's too long it's not how a human being should live <clears throat> but i couldn't just forget what i saw he just couldn't couldn't give up he nods 
but he can now. Yay! Time to give up. What have you been doing during all this time? Hiding, fishing, waiting. Two police officers step out of the Whirling in Rags cafeteria. Satellite officer Jean Vicmer inspects a series of burnt black letters splashed across the plaza mosaic. Patrol officer Judith Minow points west. The fishing village. She glances at her watch. We meet in 15 minutes. It's a 10 minute walk. The officers go, leaving behind the writing, still smoldering. One day, it says, I will return to your side. Always waiting. For what? For her to return. Her who? Girl child. Revolution. Mm. Nothing in history is guaranteed, but revolution is still a possibility. No. Mm. The material base for an uprising has eroded. The working class has betrayed mankind and themselves. The historic opportunity for a revolution has passed. It will not come back anymore, however hard I try. Whatever I do. So that's why he's the deserter. <laughs> yeah, mm. I agree with you, MTG Ranger. I, I don't think I would I would play the DDR version of Girl Child Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> but the anime sounds awesome. Yeah. I can dunk on this dude. I don't care about him. Yeah. He wants a deserter, always a deserter. Eat it, old man. I have done everything a man can do. What have you done? Me, 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 me. We keep people alive. We help them survive. Whatever the ideological situation. Day in and day out. Survive? For what? Okay. More questions. There's nothing serious in this world. What it's have a you? Farce. What, what? What? What have you been using this gun for? I've used it for killing people. Aha! J'accuse. Killing people. It's a gun. That's what they're for. You want a moralist euphemism? Defending your family and your property. I haven't done that. I've used it to kill people. Interesting. During or after the war? There is no after the war. Class war is never over. So he's continued killing after hostilities ended. Okay. Okay. This is it. You can feel it. Like battery acid on the tip of your tongue. Something you haven't felt in a while, but... For what? This is what you live for. This is the shit. The great serotonin jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> Buy a ticket every day. Never win. <laughs> yep. The solution. Going straight. No euphemisms. He doesn't like those. No, no. Be careful now. Slow and steady does it. Make him repeat it first. Don't mess this up. Remember, he wants to tell you. Get personal. Hmm. So you're saying you killed people after active fighting stopped? What did I just say? What did I just tell you? Yeah. Don't drop the ball now. Did you use that gun to shoot and kill a colonel of the security contractor Krennel? Or should it just be like... Yeah. I know you want to tell me. Have you killed yeah. anyone with that gun in the last week or two? Yeah. I, I think that's the one. I don't want to tell you anything. 
you grotesque murderer. And yet... And why did you think that was a good idea? Don't listen to me. I'm wrong all the time. I'm gonna... I'm, I'm gonna strangle suggestion. I'm gonna... <laughs> The who now? He heard you. He just wants to hear you say it again. This is dramatic flair on his part. Right choice. We're in. Do it, sire. Uh, the fascist death squad who took a bullet in the mouth on the night of the fourth. Oh, yes. That one. Ugly piece of work, that boy. Did you kill him? I am a son of a welder, and an officer of the Commune of Revachol. I do not collaborate with murderers and pederasts of the liberal regime. A drop of blood in the saliva. No. Oh. Stop spitting everywhere. <laughs> Exhaust him with proof. Pile it all on him. Get a confession. The gun. The murder weapon is the perfect opener. The scent of blood in the air. But what else? There was something you can't remember. Something about the tracks. Suddenly, all those tracks are so confusing. Go with something else first. Mm -hmm. I've got the gun. <laughs> Not a lot of guns around that use military grade ammunition, are there? It's a real gun. Not like your little musketeer pistols. I've seen you prance around with those. Jumping hoops for the liberals. You look like imbeciles. Why don't you ask them to give you real weapons, eh? <laughs> Going against automatic rifles with a flame bomb. Of course you got all those boys killed. Damn, he saw you. He's watched it happen. So he saw you? Okay. So what? Don't let it divert you. Yeah, so what? We have the murder weapon. You know what? You're right. I'm convinced this made the shot. Should we call it? You think we have the murder weapon? 4.46 hmm. jacketed ammunition, modified for range. We have it. This is it. I'm calling it. We have the murder weapon. Good. This feels good, doesn't it? Tying things up like this. When you have the murder weapon, you have the killer. Murder. Like a marionette on some invisible string. This pushed him, but not enough. Just a little more. We've done the ballistics. Shot came from this island. I saw you poking around there, looking for evidence. You're damn diligent when it comes to dead fascies. Did you like the view? You had direct visibility. There are embrasures in the concrete, specifically meant for a top follower to use. And you had a long range rifle in your possession. You have been here a long time, Mr. Dross. Too long. You need medical aid. I'm ready to die. <coughs> I've done my part. He's practically admitting to it. Dead fascists, for fascists, done his part. Mm. <clears throat> it's the best I like number three. Play. Oh, the view is perfect. Pair of binoculars. I like. I like reminding leading him to talk to you about seeing into the room. Okay. Because it's a sniper's nest, you stupid fuck. Radio Gosh is right. You have worms in your brain. Almost. He almost burst out there. Keep piling arguments. Anything. <laughs> You're a communist. I talked to the dead man. He told me communism <laughs> killed him. Stupid dwat. The lieutenant looks at you with worry <laughs> in his eyes. Not this, he seems to say. Anything but this. It was intuition. 
Had he yep. spoken, he would have said communism killed him. Intuition is an aberrant psychologism. <laughs> it reeks of crypto-fascism. The parasite class use intuition to justify their rank in life. It's all just palmistry and magic, Earl creatures. Your brain is rotting from the radio waves. It is the radio waves. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, that's he definitely does not it. Answer the provocation. It does not look like he thinks this approach worked. <laughs> Yeah, this just did nothing. But still, somehow you knew it was a communist. How? Perhaps you suspected it before you took the case. Mm. The vision was you remembering that. But this is nothing. Was it supposed to? I will look deeper then. The inland sea is dark, vast, and on the surface meaningless. Standing there, slack-jawed, brain festering. What am I forgetting? Wait, here it comes. The goddamn Maybells. The dried Maybells on Clasia's roof. Oh, yeah. There were Maybells in the grass when you got here. They're revolutionary symbols from the war. Nowhere else, nowhere in all of Martinez have you seen them this spring. Wait, don't forget the footprints. Just keep slapping the yourself. The prints in the dust yeah. in the secret space behind <laughs> Clausia's bedroom. Now, they're gonna come up. Aha! Uh -huh. You got it. Remember, the boot prints were like no modern soul. I wonder what brand of boots you're wearing. Everything is brands with you individualists. Who cares what brand my shoes are? Sansa. Some shit. Show me the souls, please, Mr. Doras. Fucking imbecile. The maker is Sensorik. The model is Corobe, and the size is 43. These are not the unusual horizontal pattern souls you saw in the dust on the floor of the hidden room. They do, however, seem to be about the same size. The size fits, but not the soul. Maybe it's simpler than that. Sire, he doesn't have to be wearing them right now. People change shoes. Doesn't mean you weren't there near the room the victim died in sneaking around. Racking mm. those brains, are you? Desperate to report something back to your masters. They must have really loved that dead fuck. The lieutenant gives you a quick sideways glance and nods to acknowledge. The prints were his. You can see it in those eyes. He can't keep them from flickering, looking for something. The old man stares at his own prints in the ash around the fire. Silent suddenly, some strange process within him. A gush of wind. Seagulls in the distance. You've almost got him. Just the last little push. Boom! Flowers! Damn Mabel. The whole island is turning white with them. He seems tender suddenly. Nostalgic even. A strange mood swing. So many this year too. The spring is coming. No. It's already here. Wash the filth away. I haven't seen these flowers anywhere else in Martinez. It's only here. They blossom on the islets before. We fertilize them with our blood. Hezorexion was snow white in May, before they ruined it. The coast, too, before they piled their containers on top of it, filled with broken, useless trash for fat-fingered bourgeois children to play with. You must get around a lot to stay undetected all these years. Do you know any secret paths? Pinball workshops? I may. Young woman called Classia. These dried flowers were behind her window. Classia. You know her, right? She had intimate relations with the victim, the mercenary. With the victim. There is a small tremble. Looks like a smile. A crooked smile. Yet isn't quite voluntary. 
He's about to burst. You know who he was. A coalition-trained murderer, armored and armed. He wasn't human. The blunt end of a hammer, dripping with blood. Hmm. Was a killer, but still under protection of the law? He's a soldier, hmm. he was a man. Yeah, soldierman? Yeah, yeah. Beating us to the ground, moaning with joy. You hounds get so thorough when a company train killer dies. I haven't seen you on this coast for 40 years. You know, maybe I should have killed one sooner. Got your attention. Now you stop beating druggies and prostitutes in your basement. Now you come to investigate. Not when they die by the hundreds. This is it. Shot him. Shot him. Say shot him, not killed him. So you shot him. Oh, the inhumanity. One paramilitary less in Revachol. The lieutenant raises his right arm to Hashi. Hush, he does not need to be pushed anymore. The ball is rolling. While the lieutenant listens, holding his breath. I'm gonna hold my breath too. I had them in my sights. Both of them. Him and the whore. I was breathing with them, in phase, and I pulled the trigger and flew on the air until I landed in his mouth. I didn't think I had a shot like that in me anymore. I did. I saw him kneel there with his mouth full of death and that stupid look on his face. And his dick still in her. Then what? Nothing. I went to sleep. Next morning there were Maybells everywhere. The world was white. Or what's left of it anyway. My last spring here. I knew the fascists would come to avenge their own. And so they did. Mr. Dross, are you aware you're confessing to murder? Yes. And you were looking at them? The victim and a young woman having sex? through the scope of your rifle that night, before you shot him? The old man nods. Why? Because that's what they were doing. The motive. This is where the motive is going to come from. You can coax it out of him. The lieutenant's preparing the ground. I don't understand. Do you, detective? I don't understand this part. Why were you looking at them? I'm always looking. Are you always looking through the scope of a rifle? I'm just trying to understand. A rifle scope has the best magnification. And if you don't like it? Click. You pull the trigger? Yes. Think of it as a form of critique. He will not stop now. These dialectical materialist types never do exploit it. You've got him going. Connect every little piece now. Wrap this up like a gift. Uh, what specifically did you not like? Them. Fucking. I didn't like that. So you were jealous? Jealousy is a reactionary concept. I didn't like the Reaver enjoying himself. Drugged out. Soothed in the arms of a young woman. I wanted him to die so he could not enjoy life anymore. And I wanted to see his head explode. That too. She should know better than to hold a child murderer between her thighs. I knew he'd be there for one more second. Writhing. That's all it takes for the bullet to reach his head. Now that I think of it, I wasn't aiming for his mouth. I wanted his brains to spill out on her. But you can't have everything. This man has seen past her, like you did. And now he longs to see her covered in blood. To punish her. 
you wanted to punish her, so you killed him? She practically breastfed that man. You wouldn't believe the things she let him do to her. While he stands here and rots. I got nothing. Yeah. Yeah. The old man raises his gaze. Something glimmers in the corner of his black eye. A bitter taste on his tongue. How long had you been watching her? Since she came to Martinez. I saw her sneaking in the reeds early in the morning behind the fell building. It was dark, still winter. She didn't have her skimpy outfit on then. Just a spot in the night, moving. Past the fell building on the coast. What was she doing there? Hiding something in the water. She had a fag after she'd done it. I was up in the ruins there. She couldn't see me, but I could see her smoking. She was nervous, but not scared. What do you think she hid there? Her passport and tickets to Villiers. <coughs> and from there to Cachet Bru. It's the hidden buoy she told us about. You looked into it? After she was gone. Did you keep what was in it? When we found the submersible, it was empty. No. Why would I do that? I didn't need tickets to Villiers. I put them back. If I wanted to extort someone, I'd do better. This implies that he's thought about extorting her. Also, a little inconsistency here. He was surprised to hear her name, Clasia, before. Would he not have seen it on the documents? You saw her name in the passport, but before when I said her name was Clasia, you didn't seem to recognize it. You didn't say Clasia in there. What did it say her name was? Uh, it was something. Uh, I don't remember. It was dark that morning. I only remember her face on the photo. All right, uh, what, what happened next? I did. She had a face like an archipelago with those birthmarks and a body hard and lean and bruised all over, black and yellow. I could see she's taken a beating. I could see who she was, too, a spook on the run. Revachal's the cloaker of capital now. All the bagmen and arms dealers end up here to do drugs and have sex like animals. The cloaca of capital. <laughs> you could tell she was a spook from the documents? She had different color hair on the photo and glasses. Forged. Some sordid bourgeois affair. I heard about this kind of thing on the radio. He's setting it up for you. The bruises. You can't make that out in a scope. You can see the bruises through the scope of the rifle? You can't see bruises through a scope. It's just a blur. Mm. But, but how? It quickly comes to you. Ever see her through a window on a roof? Mm-hmm. Even through the secret route behind the whirling Ending rags. Like a bow against the glass. Those, those are your footprints. You just changed your shoes. I've been through all of Martinez. Every nook and cranny. And that too. Yes, that too. The things they did in that little room. What she'd do to feel good. Funny the way light works. You turn it on inside, and it gets so dark out, you can't see a man looking in. I learned that in the 20s, when they were still hunting me. I've seen people do some shit, but... Those two took the cake. You hear the familiar scribble of the lieutenant's pen. A quick glance at you. Like, what are we talking here? Was there, like, a hamster involved? Like... <laughs> One more loose end down. We're doing this, detective. How did you get in there, the hidden pinball workshop? I can just walk in there now after a good wash. I told you, 
They think I'm an antisocial. Closing hour is a good time. The kitchen's empty. You had to open the steel door in the kitchen? How? I got that open a long time ago. Some bourgeois game merchant lived there. I don't know, 15 years ago? He left spare keys all over, and I took one. Then I saw her turn the light on one night in my scope. And the they were use for it. A spare key. Oh. Like the one hanging behind the union box window. They work so hard to make him so loathsome so quickly. Yeah. Um like he is you know, despite his political or his economic political leanings, he's a deeply like conservative scold. Yeah. And just a hateful man. But he also he, like he has that entitlement, like mm -hmm. it's his right to watch everyone and everything. Yeah, that this is his city. Um and he will uh make judgments as to who is allowed to exist in it. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't about him, it was about her. Her. The lieutenant nods at you in acknowledgement. That's it. Motive. We have it. Where is she, that classier? I haven't seen her there for days. I'm not at liberty to say. I know she's gone. Locked up or on the run. She kept staring into the scope, you know. In the end, this last week, at the fort. Like she knew. Like she knew I was here. It doesn't matter. Across the water, on a dilapidated jetty in a nameless village, made of grey cinder block houses with etonite roofs, two police officers and one special consultant look across a narrow strip of sea. Ha! Huh. We stole the last boat! I mean, borrowed. No. By asking nicely. He's there, doing what exactly I don't know. Satellite Officer Vic Mayer points at the ruins. Behind that anti-aircraft something. That's why we can't see him. Special Consultant Heidelstam is optimistic. We'll see the boat when he comes. Let's go get a coffee until then. I know this interesting little place. Where? His voice trails off as the three walk down the jetty. As the men go, Patrol Officer Minnow looks back over her shoulder at the crumbling fortification in the snowfall, like a rotten tooth rising out of the water. Good luck, Harry, she thinks. You need something good for this. We could get more. We've got him talking. Who knows what he's seen and done over the years. You could get more out of him. He likes talking. Enough. Take him in. Bend his arms behind his back and end this. You're under arrest. What? <laughs> but you said I would be taken to the... The sum of all the erratic movements, fidgeting and mood swings he's been exhibiting. Your wayfarer rights have been suspended. Information provided to the officers on the scene will be used against you by the prosecution. You will... Mm. Do you understand? But... Do you understand? No, I don't want to. I have to stay here. He's sweating. Beads are forming on his forehead. Your confirmation is not required, sir. Now on to the boat. Wait! There it is again, to your north, as it has been since you came to the coast. The reeds whisper, stalks rubbing against each other. But then, in the middle of it, Qua? something completely different. It sounds like a bow, very slowly being drawn against the strings of a violin. A very small violin, made of reeds and rushes. Maybe there is room for three on the boat. Hmm. Shush, Kim. Shush. What? What are you talking about? Is this... really us? Your skin crawls. Ah, there it is. Ah, there it 
is. A delicate tangle of arms and legs unfolds from the reeds, limb by limb, to then just stand there, moving its scythe-like arms in ghostly silence. It's still there, an unfolding mechanism of reed-like chitin hovering in place. What are those? What are you talking about? Giant stick insect. There's nothing there. The stick insect is over three meters tall. It looks straight at you with its tiny pinprick eyes and its grotesquely small head. You feel your legs shaking under you and your gun hand move to your holster to grab the gun. There is. I see it! Tell me what you see. Kim, can you see it? I can see it. Four simple words. Thank God. If you can see, then you're not insane. But that means it's really there, spinning slowly, in absolute silence, its limbs long and slender. Be very, very careful. All right. I've got six points. So... Ooh. Uh, composure? Yeah, let's get some composure couple in. Uh, um, well, let Empire? me look up what, what the tests are that it wants. Sure. I mean, we're not above this. Um, I think more Inland Empire. Yeah. Um. Oh, come on. These walkthroughs are all so bad. I like your chemistry. Yeah, I'm gonna dump the rest in in the bar. Okay. That's it. Okay. That's all she wrote. And we are fully dressed. Yes, dressed to impress. All right. Come here, stick bug. The creature stands on long stilt-like legs, antennae hanging from its head like a woman's hair, white and curled at the tips. It is no more than five steps away from you. Reed-like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss, like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. The hiss is different from the strings you heard before. It says something else in a lower pitch. Listen. Be afraid. You smell wrong. Hmm. This is the Insulindian Phasmid. It is. You glance over your shoulder. The lieutenant holds a piece of milled aluminium. He begins to pull it open, extremely carefully. No, the flash will scare the creature off. Warn him now. The flash is loud, it won't like it. We need a photo, no one will believe us. From the corner of your eye, you see a sudden cascade of motion ripple through the phasmid's limbs. A series of ultrasonic clicks fills your ear. Stop, let me get closer first. I won't be one of those fools who didn't take a picture. You see the phasmid turn to him, its mandible antennae reaching out. Its motions are quick, sudden. 
Just listen to me. Shh. The spindly mechanism turns itself back to you. Its antennae taking yes. their measure of the air. Smoke. All right. Hmm. Slowly, with your breath held, you take two small steps toward the phasmid. The creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like swallows. Like laughter, a sort of happiness. Hissing and clicking, it extends its mandible-like antennae to greet you. You're right below it now, looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. The head of the creature is crowned by reeds, and its eyes are like small droplets of water. Hello, I don't know who I am. No reply. A total ancient silence comes from its mouth, along with what appears to be some kind of foam. The stridulations of its limbs continue all around you. Stand on your tiptoes, look more closely. You were right. Little bubbles form on the mouth parts of the creature, on its segmented lower lip. It looks to be foaming, slowly. The foam is white, then yellowish. The faintest smell, like you've never felt before. Like burnt roses. Kim! It's foaming! Careful. It may be poisonous. The foam slowly turns a darker shade, like burnt caramel, as the insect moves its mouth parts, masticating. The little bubbles begin to burst, one by one, letting out that same smell, like summer burning. What are you doing? I eat six Ooh. I exist too. Tell me what he's like for you. I'm ill? What is your illness? In my heart, for me, it's sadness. Input after input. For me, it is not like that. I have states, not the emotions. For example, I experience excitement and unexpected sugar rewards, but that is not important. Now I will tell you how it is for me. For me, it is a series of half-lit images, a kind of darkness being intruded upon, transient, dim, moist. Intruded upon by what? Shapes of plants and animals and internal sensations, a swarm of sounds, tiny vibrations on the inside of my forearm, all speak of complexities totally beyond my understanding. I am at the end of an era funnel, weightless, so light, it only feels like something to be me. In truth, perhaps I'm nothing. I certainly do not have a soul, and if I did, it would never ache. Hmm. I'm glad to be me, an incredibly sensitive instrument. Or you're the type of animal I would like to be. Ooh. I like two. I mean, you although we... Can begin to imagine the horror of you. That was my first pick. It's all of creation reflected in your foreplay. It must be like the highest of hells, a kaleidoscope of fire and writhing glass. Eternal damnation. I mean, it, it offers a coda to one of the first lines in the game, which is, I don't want to be this kind of animal anymore. Yeah. Even when you're sleeping, and when you wake, you carry it around on your neck. With eyes open that cannot help but swallow more behind the mirror. I feel great. Mute empathy for you. It's hell. I changed my mind. I want to be you. <laughs> you want to be a fussman? Are you sure? Yeah. Why do you ask? Sometimes, when molting, I will grow a lost limb. One time something went wrong and a small leg replaced a missing antenna. Cool. No, the leg tried to move around independently, 
making it hard to walk. You don't have a foot there now. Yes. Thankfully someone ate it. The next time I mold it, I grow an antenna again. Where does this come from? All this around us, the world. Not even the birds know that. Not even the water lily. And all we can do is beat our fists against it day after day with no answer. You can also eat it. If it's a leaf, you can put it in your mouth. Yum yum. Or a reed. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> so. You look like a reed and you eat reeds? Yes. They don't mind. Have you ever accidentally eaten another reed phasmid? Yes. I once cloned myself and ate the little ones. It was winter, and I woke up at the wrong time. It was an accident. <laughs> what are you? I am an all-known species of the order Phantasmodia, endemic to the Insulindia Isola. For the last 350 years, I have hidden in plain sight, masquerading as the reeds, molting, Calming myself, unfolding at night to play with trash bins and boys. I went unnoticed by the first settlers and the land surveyors of the Suzerain. Also, by the soldiers of the revolution and the officials of the occupation. Even the Samanese islanders who came here first, but did not stay, have not seen me. I have stayed hidden through four forms of government and two scientific revolutions until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the cities of Malaysia in Revolshaw, district of Martinez, March 51. Is this a dream? What's happening? No, you are awake. I am real. Light is forming me. This is real. I am a detective. So am I. I was born to detect sucrose rewards and semiochemicals. What were you born to detect? Also that. I can also <laughs> detect pheromones. The ones on you tell me that you will not eat me, and that I will benefit from your closeness. In short, I love you. <laughs> okay, goodbye now. No. There is one more. Uh, of all the creatures I've met, you're the kindest? I think I usually say yeah. beautiful, but yeah, kindest. Thank you. I also have one more thing to say to you. That woman, turn from the ruin. Turn and go forward. Do it for the working class. Asmid's a communist too. Yeah. I will. She was middle class. It doesn't take <laughs> a three meters thick insect to tell you that. Raise a hand. The insect stops its stridulation, seeming to observe you. Below its crown of reeds, little pinprick eyes detect motion, glittering. The world stands still around you. Suddenly, there is silence. Raise the other hand, too. As you do, the invertebrate comes to life, its limbs moving independent of each other, as if each has a mind of its own. They are white, like stalks of porcelain, knitting above you, praying to you. That's right. Pray! Unwittingly, the insect continues its stridulations. As it moves, tuft-like structures still pretending to be plants rustle along on its joints. Perhaps it is preparing to eat its god. Okay, Kim, take the picture now. Okay. There is no change in the insect's motion while it's being aimed by the camera. It remains fixated on you. In three, if it moves, 
You jump back. I'll shoot. Here we go. Three, two, one. The shrill flash of the camera cuts the air like the blade of a sword. The phasmid freezes in its bright light. Head turned toward the lieutenant, hypnotized by the flash. It stands frozen before you. I got it. For all time. Gonna touch the whisker. The antennae hang from a great height. With your hand shaking, you barely touch the tip of the left whisker. On contact, the kiting curls into a spiral, like the tip of a poison ivy. Its touch on your fingertip feels cold, ticklish. It is surprisingly delicate, the curly end of the whisker, like a young vine. It's even a bit wet. Be careful, detective. It's moving. Look at your finger. You were right. It glistens with some kind of moisture. The creature in front of you stays frozen. Lick your finger. It tastes like sugar. Very mm. faint. The anthropod towers above you. Tufts of reeds pointed from limb and head alike. Odorless. Mostly comprised of water. Pet scythe-like forearm. The limb before you is incredibly light. Like eggshell. It's much lighter than a reed. You feel a soft push could tip the creature over. It's hollow exoskeleton collapsing. Warning. Pull hand away. <laughs> a sudden shiver passes Up the, the thigh? Yeah. It looks like the creature is awakening. Wave by wave from its stupor. Some sort of countdown process is happening. That's all you have time to think. All right, we got this. Another shudder pulses through the creature's limbs. It jolts back to life, like a record continuing where it left off, in a swaying, praying motion. Even the small black pearls of its eyes do not stray from you. Disengage. As you're turning away, the phasmid mirrors your movements, stepping on the water, the long limbs carrying its feather weight without breaking its surface. And then it just really awkwardly. <laughs> and just like that, it's gone. Skating away across the sea's calm mirror like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles on the water and something under it. In the place it stood, bobbing there, among the reeds, a collection of items. It's gone. It can walk on water? Apparently, yes. Like a water strider. Only... I've never seen anything like that in my life. What's that in the reeds? Looks like a nest of some sort. We should have a look. Okay. The what now? In some kind of strange semi-catatonic state our suspect is not looking so good we need to check on him after i open the treasure box you get a nice hat Ooh. oh class just passport hey. hey hello this passport issued by the sovereign republic of orania is issued to a black-haired woman called Katazina Alazie. Classius hidden documents from the empty boy. What was this doing in the Phasmid's nest? Maybe our man, Mr. Dross, took it from Classius, or whatever her name was. Hiding place, or...? Hmm. I think the Phasmid took it? Like a magpie? What a coincidence. Then it would also have collected the other objects which would be highly unusual. I can see how the helmet could wash up on the island, and the scope. Maybe Mr. Dross lost it, but to seek this out would be very unusual behavior for an arthropod. Look at the photo. It's Clasia, with short black hair and glasses. She looks boyish, younger somehow. Says Katarazine Alassie. She said it would be for 
Anouk Meyer Smith. Anouk Meyer Smith. I don't know who Katarzyna Alassia is, but it's safe to say it's not her either. In short, we got lied to, again. In a way, she's still lying to us. What's her real name? I don't know, but it's not Katarzyna Alassia, or Klasia, or Anouk Meyer Smith. We didn't even scratch the surface with her, detective. Perhaps it's better that we didn't arrest her. Who knows what else she'd be raising in my district by now. Okay. Talk to old man. What is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. Or were you thinking break time? Uh, it might be good for break time now, actually. All right. And then we can all kind of digest what happened with the phasmid. That's true. Yeah. So yeah. let's take a quick break and, and think a little bit about what the hell just happened to us all. All right. <laughs> all right. Tight. I'm back. <coughs> Bless Excuse you. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get this man to a hospital. Something is very wrong with him now. Uh, sir, how could you not see the phasmid? See? Mr. Dallas? The man does not respond. He keeps staring, black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets, his gap-toothed mouth shaking. Touch shoulder? The plastic cape feels coarse. A light shiver passes the man. Other than that, no reaction. He feels small and frail. He's going into some kind of psychomotor immobility. The good news is, this solves our transportation problem, doesn't it, Mr. Dross? The trembling mouth appears to sigh. Between this and the broken tire he's used for a boat, I think it's safe to leave him here, while we go and get help. It will need to be medical first, I'm afraid. Hang on tight! We should think about getting back to the mainland, to get help. He'll be safe here. All right. Now it's nap time for us. Hey, it's his boat. Mm. Doing fine. We're doing fine. Not gonna yep. suddenly get sleepy. Nope. Nope. Cool. Oh, can we make it out without that dream? I thought we had to do the dream. Yeah. I thought it would be kind of interesting to have the dream after the Phasmid's advice. Oh, yeah, to, to let her go. Yeah. Just gonna take a, a brief, brief nap. There's a greasy old spring mattress in the corner, resting on piles of soft cover books. White linen and a pillow are visible under a worn out caracal blanket. Someone has been squatting here. The linen is fresh, recently washed. There's signs that someone lives here. A flash of pain interrupts you, making you wince instead of letting the words out. You know, officer. You can rest here if you are feeling tired. I will keep watch. You could oh. use some rest for what's ahead. Yeah, nap time for baby. You face the yeah. concrete wall. Yeah. There's less light there in the dark corner. Like a dog, you lie there. Curl up with your knees close to your chest. The blanket feels cold. The entire room does. Concrete and cold. Minutes pass. Half an hour, maybe. The sounds of the sea beyond grow distant. Your eyelids close until. At least we still got this banging back track. <laughs> you feel yourself standing up in the darkness, right next to the mattress. Slowly, the world begins to hatch from the blackness. It's evening. 
sleep. Tenant's no longer here. Go outside to the beach. That's not the way to the beach. This is the way to the beach. <coughs> you know, it's a little thing, but the name Dolores Day is... <laughs> it's good, it is. right? Like, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a vulgar thing. It's a straightforward thing. It's putting putting what you mean right in the crosshairs and pulling the trigger. Mm-hmm. But well, what else but, are you gonna call God? Like Yeah, exactly. Right. Like there's no subtext here. That's not how this works. No. Down the chain. Over here? I thought it was no, it's that way. Doodly doodly doo. Right? Yes? No? I'm so lost! Chain. Chain. Follow. Chain. If I were a chain, where would I uh, be? I want to say it's near the top of the island, isn't it? We used to walk into the water. Yeah. Or the chain is... Wasn't the chain to the mainland? Mm-hmm. Ah, there it is. Mm -hmm. Ooh, footprints in the water. Okay, I mean, divinity, but there's also that connection to the phasmid. Yeah. Right, which walked away across the water. Day, the innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state turns around to face you. She has an airship airbag in her hand. She seems to be in a hurry. It's the video store. Um, just before we move forward, uh, the deserter was an officer in the anti-aircraft division, right? His job was yep. to instill ideological, you know, or ensure, what, what did Kim say? Ensure civilian control of the military? Mm -hmm in a uh, military organization that was there to shoot down aerostats. Yep. Um, and we only kind of see those that... Those only turn up at a couple of points in the game. One, Kim's jacket is like a vintage aerostat pilot. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a bomber jacket, but in, in, in the game, it's an aerostat pilot jacket. So, you know, you could imagine the deserter maybe reacting a bit to that hmm. negatively. Um, but here, Dolores is carrying an airship bag yeah. as well. And that's a very deliberate, like, choice of words, I think. Or it feels like it. I think you could make the argument there that the deserter um, represents a kind of, like, static impulse hmm. um, in our own... God, what am I even saying? Whereas, like, flying and going fast is antithetical to him. Yeah, but, like, his... He would shoot down her escape. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But it's also, it's like, I don't think airplanes exist, so they've got blimps. No, no, it's not. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I agree. That's the, that's the world building going on here. But he also didn't have to be an anti-airship officer yeah right could have been infantry could have been cavalry could have been something else but they made those choices anyway mm -hmm. sorry that was just something i had noticed That's valid 
Yeah. Okay. Don't say you need to talk right away. Melt the ice first. This way you're already talking. But you don't even want to talk to her. She would only be cold and mean. Let her go. Let her go? This is the Holy Queen of the territories of Muindi and Insulinda. Think of the historic knowledge we could glean. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to win her back. Something is off? I'm sorry. I was heading to the aerodrome. I just don't have time to... She means she doesn't have time to tend to your emotions. You don't have time to tend to my emotions? She sighs and looks over her shoulder. What are you doing? Stop saying things like that. <sighs> what's, it, what, what's in the bag? Just my scepter, my globe crucigere, a spare silk gown, a toothbrush, travel documents, the crown of immortality. Aren't you already wearing the crown? Oh, this. This is just a wreath. The crown of immortality is made of rarefied light, manna and raw palladium. It was passed on to me by the rulers of late antiquity. She looks at the suitcase, not knowing what more to say, then over her shoulder. Anyway. Bye. <laughs> I'm supposed to let her go. I don't want to fight. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, maybe we could ask where she's going. Okay. Where are you going? I'm going to Marova to live there in Grad. It's one million kilometers away, Harry. Might as well be another lifetime. I, yeah, maybe we should just walk away here. Yeah. Is what you want to say, but you don't. Hammers clang in the distance. Children laugh. I want to go! Where? There's water all around. She turns her face, and it's illuminated by the sign of the video rental. Red and cyan. I can't help you. I'm totally useless. Everything I've said is lies. I want the exact same bad things you want. To stand here like a pillar of salt, saying, Goodbye! Is what you want Dang to it. say. The light from the video rental casts shadows on the ground. She turns her face, and it's illuminated by it. Red and cyan. I can't help you. I'm totally useless. <laughs> Everything I've said is lies. Hey. hey. I want the exact same bad thing. Hi, hello. Great greetings. Steps. Hey. How are you doing? I'm doing really good, actually. Both I professionally and romantically. Discovered a new species. I've come to a fulfilling and peaceful period in my life. Well, how are you doing, Harry? Wow, see? A new species. She is trying to muster enthusiasm. Rude. I told you, good things can still happen. Y yeah Exactly. Now. This is everything I always warned you about. Okay. Now goodbye? Is what you ah. want where? I can't help you. Fine. Epic I'm showdown. Totally useless. <clears throat> everything I've talk. said is lies. I want the exact same bad things you want. To stand here, like a pillar of salt, saying... Hmm. Every Corvus, I've never... Due to, due to my upbringing and stuff, I've never um, considered turning into a pillar of salt like a... a subtle reference. Like, uh. the story of Lot's wife and Sodom and Gomorrah is like... It's like one of the big ones that everyone knows. Yeah. Hmm. I'm trying to think if there's any. There's some fun parallels that I've I've heard uh, about like nuclear blasts that are fun. With oh. the pillar of salt thing. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. 
Mm. Okay, you just meant how they don't really dwell on it. Mm. They just mm -hmm. toss it in there. I mean, it's it's an interesting reference because it makes it has implications for the game world. Mm -hmm. Right? We are literally confronting a a a something that we conflate with God. Yeah. Well, and there was another right? literally little thing where they said the crown is made of manna. Yes. It's another biblical thing. Uh, but now we fight. No, hmm. Harry. No. I don't want a massive epic showdown. I want to go to the aerodrome. I have tickets for the 1020 flight to Morova. Really? We don't have anything to talk about anymore. Every combination of words has been played out. The atoms don't form us anymore. Us. Our love. Our unborn daughters. So Harry wanted a family. Mm. Or she did and they couldn't. Yeah. It's all gone. <clears throat> I have to go to the aerodrome. I have to leave Ravishol and you. And you have to be alone. In hell. Forever. That's just the way it is. Oh God, whatever you do, don't try to kiss her yet. Not after that. You're still reeling. You'll fall over if you try it now. Um... I've been reading books, lots of new ideas about ideology and capital. That sounds nice, Harry, but I really don't want to argue about ideology with you right now. This won't be an argument. It will be emotional and true. <laughs> okay, listen, please, it helped me realize I can't let you go because loving you is impossible. You're like a star I should follow. A long sigh. One millennia in the making. <laughs> now I'm imagining like the background radiation from the Big Bang when it's actually like it's a it's just a sigh. It's just a really long <sighs> Christ, not this shit again. Yeah. It's like I already went through this once. <laughs> I thought we settled this. <laughs> Apricot scented chewing gum brushes your cheek. And sticks there like a glob. <laughs> I am not a star. I'm a confused young woman eating your mind. There are no stars. There is no light. There will be no future. There is only this intersection and the aerodrome where I must go incessantly, brutally, utterly without redemption or hope. Our dreams are not kind to us. Mm. The star has gone out. She cannot rekindle it. You cannot rekindle it. There is nothing within or below matter. Just the dull no of a mind made up. Just like four billion others. I am so sorry. But that's not a very good way for things to be. It's not, but... That's it? That's it, yes. We've talked about it a million times. You will get over it, just like I did. People do. Things will get good for you again. We're in hell. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <clears throat> You're only making it worse for him. You never help with anything. <laughs> Good for me where? In fucking hell? <laughs> this I is gonna go wanna... well. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes. She'll come around now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Good one, Harry. <laughs> Rhetoric. <laughs> Are you stupid? <laughs> <laughs> She's about to say something. Here it comes. She started to love him again her innocence dolores day fiddles with the handle of 
her airport bag. She has a pained expression on her face. It's agonizing. Yeah, it's hard to say goodbye to people sometimes. They're, just, mm. they're standing there in a crosswalk with their luggage and you just want to have a casual conversation and they keep trying to leave. You don't want <laughs> them to. See? She isn't saying anything. I don't understand. It was she herself said. <laughs> we were bad for each other, okay? I was bad for you. Can you not see? I'm bad. I had to stop. I couldn't just turn into a bad person. You will get better. It just takes some time. For you, I think it will take something like 20 years, maybe? It was hard for me too, you know? I used to think I couldn't live without you. But I can. Uh, uh. Hmm. Pro pro proceed. Yeah, proceed. Doesn't have to be like this. Maybe we could try again. That sounds like a great idea and a great yeah. suggestion. No yeah, way. that's exactly what she meant. Why? We already tried again and it didn't work. Try, try again. Is that how it is now? We should just try all good things twice and then give up. By that logic, not to you too. <laughs> yeah, let's try building communism twice. If it doesn't work, let's abandon it and be slaves forever instead. Yes, of course. I'm bourgeois because I don't want to keep hurting you. What went wrong when we tried again? I can do it better. I don't know. Please. Why? Harry, we can't be together because you're insane. Rude. She avoids turning them to you. Insane like what? Like cool insane? They're turning moist now. Her eyes. She slowly shakes her head and tries to get a hold of herself. What do you mean? Her hands in her gown. What do you mean by insane? You know what I mean. No, I don't. It was just a necktie. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about a tie, Harry. You've worked there for so long you can't even talk like a normal person anymore. It's always lists with you. Questions. Oh, that's fun. Making, mm. like, the... The interface that we have for playing the game into a problem for normal human yep. interaction. Yep. That, uh, the behavior that the game rewards is in fact extremely dysfunctional. Questions? Did someone say questions? <laughs> lists their trees this is another one isn't it we're in a tree right now it's not possible to talk without trees it's not just the lists or trees or whatever you get sad harry too sad people can't get that sad it's impossible to watch other people get sad too but not like you you stay down for too long until you start giving your thoughts names and talking to things. In conclusion, you're ill. You're an old, insane man. And you have to be in hell until the end of your life. And I have to go to Morova. <gasps> Don't go? No. Don't say it. Don't beg. It will only make her go. Yes, other questions. Where's the list? Yes, somewhere hidden among the options popping up in your nervous system is the <laughs> right one. The right one. That will yeah. make her love you. This will again. fix everything. Do not go to the aerodrome at all. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. What happens now? Nothing. I have to go. I'm going to go now. 
I was wrong. You don't have power over her anymore. You shouldn't have said that. I am wrong about everything. You should go on without me. What if we had coffee first, huh? No. Uh. That would only be painful and dull. At the aerodrome, life, love, and laughter are waiting for me. At the cafeteria, dust, hell, and tragic comedy. Okay. And then nods silently like a martyr. <laughs> yes. That last part's very important for us, I feel. No, you don't. You're just being a martyr. <laughs> yeah. And I'm really going now. The time is up. I must be on the 1020 flight. Will we ever see each other again? I won't see you, but you will see me. Uh. Like an old communist sniper who just yeah. watches all the time. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Harry, it's a metaphor. This is a dream. Can't you see? I'm already in Morova by now. Who knows how long ago this happened? A year? Two? Five years ago? How will I see you again then? Right here, tomorrow night. Once this dream starts happening, it keeps happening. Three times a week, at least. And Harry, it really, really looks like it started happening again. There's the video rental. I'm suffocatingly beautiful and young. And I smell of tutti frutti chewing gum. Like I did that time when I asked you for forgiveness. After leaving you the first time. So long ago. Uh, but this is intolerably bad. Oh yes. This is real darkness. It's not death or war or child molestation. Real darkness has love for a face. The first death is in the heart, Harry. Death is in the heart. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Oh, I feel so refreshed and like my pelvis isn't shattered. Yep. You're up quick. Oh. How was your sleep? Uh, it was total annihilation, Kim. I <laughs> did not want to wake you. Perhaps I should have? Was it a job dream? No, ex-wife dream. The lieutenant nods solemnly. I understand. We've all been through similar things. It can be overcome. Swallow the blood and conclude. Let's get back to the mainland. That's the next step in the task chain. Okay. He's still worried. You must have really thrashed and squealed in your sleep. <laughs> Picky. Oh. Once a pig, always a pig. Mm hmm. That's not true. People can change. done here the skiff rocks gently under your weight as you get in the ride back is uneventful and quiet except for the boombox <laughs> yeah for the sound of conversation on the water there is someone inland waiting for you two men and a woman stand on the concrete square of a nameless village looking at a small yellow boat as it draws closer the sea is calm you reach the jetty and climb okay. out of the skiff. Whew. I hope we have time to finish this. Oh, yeah. I think these conversations last, are, are shorter than we remember. 
Harry. You're bleeding all over the place. You're half dead. Oops. Whatever this is, it is completely unimportant compared to what you've just seen. This is the man with sunglasses from the Whirling in Rags. But where are his sunglasses? No one else seems bothered by the bleeding. Bothered by it? Harry, you look like you need a fucking organ transplant. Oh, fuck it. Let's not get into that. Forget about all this. There's a giant... We're not forgetting about anything. Look at you. You're the man with the sunglasses. That's right. And you're bleeding. <sighs> Who are you? Hello. I'm Trent Heilerstam. I believe we've met on several occasions. I'm your goddamn partner, Jean Vicumar. And this is your special task force. Or what's left of it. Special Consultant Trent Heidelstam, Battle Officer Judith Mino. Hi. We've come to scrape what's left of you off the pavement. Lieutenant Kim Kisoragi. God, he's got a great voice. Mm -hmm. We've just come from the island, where our investigation led us. The scene is making even him feel as though he has to justify your actions. We might need your help with something later. As if he recalled that he's in fact a decorated police lieutenant and not a naughty boy. Yeah. <laughs> but this is clearly a departmental matter, so I'm going to leave you to discuss it among yourselves. Thank you, Lieutenant. It's good to meet you, Lieutenant Kitsuhagi. Letting the Lieutenant know he shouldn't feel embarrassed over the shitstorm that's about to befall you. What's this about? Ari, we want to help you. Trent, I believe this is where you come in? Um, I don't quite know what I'm doing here. I was asked to participate as an expert. I think I need to manage your expectations a little. I'm at best an enthusiast in cognitive science. My background is in something else entirely. I engage in neurology on a merely theoretical level. In fact, I should probably get going. <laughs> No, Trump, it's too late. You're part of this shit now. What have you got to say for yourself, shit kid? What does he have to say for himself? He left you to catch the bullets. Shit kid. What an interest in Monica. Where have you been all this time? There was a mercenary tribunal. God damn it, Harry. You told us to fuck off. You said we're cramping your style. Your detective god. Fuck everything. All we burn. Detect or die. Hmm. So you let me face a squad of trained killers alone just to teach me a lesson. It wasn't like that. Fuck you, Harry. We didn't know there was gonna be a tribunal, did we? Uh. Hmm. I mean, we're still Apocalypse Cop. Yeah, we are. All will burn. Here we go. Alcoholic delirium. Visions. All must pay. What's a shit kid? You. Shit kid? That's you. Despite all that you've done, Despite the deserter, the phasmid, All the I've case. done? No. Because of all that you've done. So Trant Heidelstam turns out to be special consultant Trant Heidelstam. Yes, I'm Trant Heidelstam. You <laughs> never said I wasn't Trant Heidelstam. So you're Trant Heidelstam, special consultant. I get it. Again, I was asked to share my take on some of the more French academic theories developed in Königstein in the 30s. For example, partial psychotraumatic amnesia, group personality theory, He's here to see if you're insane. He is smart. Let's move on. Mm, none of this is ringing any bells. The bells aren't ringing because you have brain damage. Trant, this is where you come in. How bad is it? Well, he doesn't have visible tremors. He talks without slurring. He can drive a boat. He's standing, reasoning. All good signs, but complete retrograde amnesia. Episodic and semantic. Meaning, you forgot both who you are and the definitions of money, Isola, Pell, and so on. 
as displayed in your interactions with him here and previously at the bar and I don't want to be a snitch but also mine with him before when Harry did not seem to know who I was interesting yes interesting I have my theories but I would like to hear Harry's thoughts first Harry what do you think happened to you neurologically psychologically and why not socioeconomically hmm Six? Something so sad happened to me that I couldn't be me anymore? Or do we talk about the whole? Uh... I mean, I think either is... G I, I can't remember what we did last time. I think I'm tempted to talk about the whole, even though I think that'll piss Jacques off. Or Jean off. Yeah. Trying to avoid responsibility, I think we'll just, like cheese him off a bit. Um, but I do think it, like, in all honesty, it quite clearly has something to do with what happened to us. Mm-hmm. Might have to do with the hole. Corresponding to the 20 centimeter hole in your brain. Sure. This theory has great symmetry. I see how it folds into itself neatly. Precisely, Satellite Officer Vic Mir. It's Martinez. I'll explain later, but there's another man who's lost his memory. A crab man. Crab man is an unfortunate choice of words, but I was there. The church on the coast shook from an audio spatial anomaly. It may have been anthroponetic, or perhaps related to radio waves. Either way, I have put this into my report. You should read it. I do not, however, think it has anything to do with him drinking himself to the point of brain damage. Thank you, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. Just to clarify, I do not think his other anthroponetics are a hoax. Pale produces global phenomena. It's proven. However, what has not been proven is total memory loss after drinking too much Komodo Red. Honestly, I think he's just lying to us. But Detective Vigmer, he has blanked out before. I have? Yes, a couple of times. After some of the more serious benders. One was after the two drunks case. The other, when we looked into that mural. So you don't remember not remembering. Beautiful. Interesting. So at first he dipped his toes into it, prepared. That's where he would have gotten the idea, yes. Practice. And then he used alcohol to get there, so to speak. What do you mean? Well, here is my theory. What if this is an absolutely normal reaction to the world we're living in? What if this is not a significant anomaly at all? Something to be explained, approached as a defect. Look at the sensory input here. Look at the ruins, the neon. Listen to the radio, the multitudes, the people. Live here for 40 years. As a police detective, he's like a magnetic reader on the world tape, to borrow a known metaphor. Harry's been pushed flat against it. Total input. Hardwired to the free market. He just need it for its end. Okay, Trent, thank you. That's absolutely meaningless. I'm glad. <laughs> will he or will he not be able to work at the Major Crimes Unit? Is he a cretin now? I want to know that. <laughs> He's not a cretin, and he is able to do work. If not in his previous leadership role, then as a line detective. Yeah, all right. I'm, I'm, I think we're ready to lead again. Yeah, I'm ready to lead again. No one even mentioned that. I misphrased my question. It should have been, is he able to put his clothes on and use the body? Or do we need to get him on a disability pension? What? Now nothing. Now we're just going to stand here. I like that you can tell that he is at once both apocalyptically through with our shit. Yeah. And our best friend. Really? No. Now we discuss that. What the fuck did you do to a motor carriage? Why is it there, Harry? Hold on. In the ocean? Yes, in the ocean, under the sea. Our work vehicle with fishing clams and another sea ship. <laughs> uh, I thought the killer would be underwater. He wasn't. <laughs> He's just gonna backhand us. Ha ha ha. Ho ho ho. 
underwater killer. So funny, Harry. Thank you for fucking me. Thank you for destroying 45,000 real of body's property that's coming out of my base lip. You know that, right? You're gonna get fired, and I'm gonna pay till I die. It doesn't matter. Your badge, Harry. Show me your badge. I got my badge right here. In a rush to demonstrate your badge, your eager fingers can't sustain a grip on the smooth plastic. And the badge slips out of your hand. Ooh. Big money. <laughs> it's hard with the boombox and the sword. <laughs> yeah, the sorry, Azia. Unsuccessfully. And it lands on the ground, some two meters away. Oops. <laughs> Don't die. You strained your elbow trying to catch <laughs> that stupid thing. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, I hurt my elbow and almost died. Oh, age. Mm. He has it. He has it, Jean. It's his badge. And your gun? As if having your badge and gun are natural states, not achievements. <laughs> What is it with all these material objects? Gun, gun is here. <sighs> he has it. And he didn't drop it. You're drunk like a bum, Harry. Put that thing away before you kill someone. I didn't lose my gun. I have my gun. We're not talking about the fucking gun anymore. <laughs> We're talking about the vaporized cloud of ethanol coming from your mouth. This is so unfair. He knows you have the gun, and still he's punishing you. So it doesn't even matter that I found my gun. You were never supposed to lose it in the first place. <laughs> found? <Not> lost. <laughs> is your gun's natural state, your drunk bum. So what? A little drink. You smell like a corpse. I'm downwind and I can barely breathe. You smell like shit. You let a suspect escape, Harry. Class year is something. Because you were too drunk to assess a flight risk. We've read the reports. Lieutenant Kitsuhagis. We know. Ah. Mm. Uh. I could say she was a spy. Yeah? Yeah. She's some kind of spy from the Occident, specially trained. Oh, well. If she was specially trained, I'm not even gonna get into the other suspect who also escaped. Yeah, Ruby something. Or the fact that you're ever a Claire's little peony now, doing I don't know what for him. That's small time stuff. That's nothing. That's a humorous anecdote. Compared to the seven people who were gunned down, the streets are literally red with blood, Harry. It was fucking mass murder. He did everything he could. We did everything we could. The company hired and vetted mercenaries. Lieutenant Dubois got between them and the locals. Here comes the cavalry. He did so at considerable risk to his person. Remember, he was shot. We stopped an execution, not a negotiation. The loss of life was minimal compared to what it could have been. Mm-hmm. I also solved the case. It solved all of it. Detective. It's better if I do that. Oh. It's so much better if he does this. A million times yeah. better. Uh oh. Thank you for the input, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. I didn't mean to suggest you didn't handle the situation. <clears throat> he thinks of apologizing, but decides against it. You've spent the week with him on this case. What is your take? On um, the case? On Lieutenant Yefretor Dubois. Well, the drinking, the last gun, also losing his badge, that's all true. And he's been drinking on the job. The man sighs deeply. Then there's the apocalypse thing. At first I thought it was a joke, but it's not. He actually thinks the world is about to end in a bloodletting or gloaming. We are about to become vapor, even. It's worrying, especially considering his political views. Detective Dubois is, as you may know, a Mazovian socio-economist. He's even gotten involved in a highly theoretical underground reading group, which, again, for a police officer, is unusual. You should yell something. That's not a good idea. <laughs> but 
What if I'm a policeman of the state to come? Come on! Come on! I mean, I'm not here to tell you how to have fun. The RCM consists of policemen of the state that is. So, a little discrepancy there. <laughs> and then, there's the motor carriage in the sea. And the drugs, of course. Some kind of anti-radiation drug he uses to induce visions. But despite all this, he is a great detective. One of the best I have seen, in fact. He can talk human beings into telling him everything. And he doesn't stop. In all the time I've spent with him, he has not once stopped pursuing leads, however far-fetched and tangential. He is tireless, madly driven. Well, except that one time when he stopped to sing karaoke, which, by the way, was a valiant effort. He really sang his heart out. Effort. I like that Kim likes the version where we fail better. Yeah, it was what it was. Other than that one time, he has tirelessly worked on the case, and he solved it. We have a confession, a murder weapon, and the perpetrator, locked on the island right now, awaiting transportation. He apprehended a straggler who stayed hidden for 50 years, ever since the revolution, who's probably committed other murders over those years. Oh, and he also discovered a new species. A new species? A colossal stick insect. It was on the island, camouflaged as the reeds. It uh, unfolded from the reeds. I think we may be dealing with the Insulindian phasmid. He takes out the photo of the phasmid and shows it to the officers across the yard. Gonna win the Nobel the Prize. Blows, Jean. Flapping the glossy rectangle in his hand. You hear gasps beneath the howling of the wind. That's right. As you can see, it's about three meters tall. In fact, we think it may be the largest land invertebrate ever discovered. <laughs> what now, Jean? Huh? What now? So our options are Hosiana, Boom Shakalaka, motherfucker, and so as you can see, I'm a pretty okay detective and an absolutely giant communist. <laughs> oh. I, I like more yelling. Yeah. Giant yeah, communist. More yelling. Yeah, Fucking more yelling. Hell. Is that? Is this somehow connected to the case? The killer did not seem to be aware of the phasmid's presence. Exhibiting a strange, atypical dementia, he fell into a stupor after its appearance. He became near catatonic. Mm, yes. I mean, imagine trying to be the pro... The sequel to this game should be, you are the prosecutor. <laughs> you should deal with. <laughs> trying to convince a judge that this all really happened. Boom, boom, boom. Yes, but also... Yep, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> the Phasmid may have contributed to his mental state some way over the years. So it is connected. I must say this is absolutely extraordinary. It's... I don't even have words for it. Yes, it really does make it hard to fire the drunk. This is a very, very sad man who has just seen something that's made him forget his sadness. Yay! Now you make your case. Now is the time. <laughs> now or never. <laughs> uh, the killer, yeah, we have a strong uh, motive? Or do we start with the drug lab? <laughs> um, we could talk about the dead man that we found on the pier. We did, oh, we did the human interest thing. We need to do that. Yeah, it was a side quest we accomplished, but yeah, I think maybe it's time to just, like, bring the thunder. Yeah. Lilianovich. A revolutionary matronym. Yep. The custom started in Grad, where they have patronyms. Krasovich, Larsovich, etc. The revolutionaries saw this as a chauvinist atavism, so they used matronyms, derived from the mother's name instead. This man's mother was Lilian. His Lilian's son, Lilianovich. The custom was overturned after the revolution failed, but not before it made it to Revachol. I wonder if there is again a connection to Lily, Lillian, the, the official woman. Yeah. Yeah. So, not the, it yeah. is what a soldier of the ICM would be called. Thank you, Trant. Thank you for that piece of cultural theory. 
You said you have a motive? Of course, excuse me. I just thought it was noteworthy. Trant has so much encyclopedia. Mm-hmm. He killed the mercenary in an act of jealousy. Jealousy? I thought this Lilianovich was an old man. To have been hiding for 50 years. Like 70-something. A strange psychosexual fascination. The result of spending all this time in solitude on the islands of this bay. And trauma, too. He himself gave a political reason. In his mind, he had killed an enemy combatant. Also, we have ballistics from the gun, matching the bullet found in the dead mercenary's head, and two officers on the scene that Mr. Dross confessed to. It's a clean win. Oh, it's way more than that. Way, way more. <laughs> Yep. Hmm. Perfect folding uh, mechanism like the Phasmid. Ooh, will they teach it in cop school, though? Oh, yeah, they'll teach this in cop school. Masterpiece. Get over yourself, Harry. I can still smell the booze on the wind. God damn it. it <laughs> You're gonna be smelling so much more Even booze on the wind after they start teaching recruits to just get drunk. You know, keep focusing on the positives here. Uh, yeah. Want to take this hot shit back? I don't want to. But you discovered a new species and solved the murder. So I have to, Jude. Honestly, anything that ends this trial is okay with me. But he's been drinking, she thinks. This is exactly how he gets out of this every time. It's bad for him, but... Agreed. The public relations potential of this is too valuable to let go. Okay. We have vehicles in the square. And the perpetrator needs to be taken into custody. Let's go. Now. Now you will finally get to know who you are. Oh. We don't really have time for this. The oh, man yeah. looks westward. Impatiently. Jingling his car keys in his pocket. Okay. I'm ready. Good. Fuck it. Let's go. Trump brought his motor carriage. It's a 20 minute drive to Jamrock. Under the afternoon sky. The great district hums. A chessboard of wooden houses, 80,000 living souls, and chimney stacks. Fire traps as far as the eye can see. From Main Street to Precinct 41, to Boogie Street, forking into the snow swept horizon. You close your eyes and hear the dogs bark. A lone woman sits by a factory window, dreaming of meteorite strikes. On Rue de Saint Jerome, a square bullet slides into a square-shaped chamber. In Old South, a man without eyelids smiles. Spring has come. It's time. Dawson? Yes. McLean? Yes. Hyrulstan? No. Vikmer? Yes. Dubois? Of course. Really? Nick Scott Lee looks up from the list. I hear he's unstable. You say that like it's a bad thing. Captain Potomney Price gestures with a ballpoint pen. It's dim in his office, and the curtains are drawn. Harry's our man. He'll pull through. When he does, he'll side with the people. Understood. Gottlieb returns to the list. Minnow? Of course. Wonderful. Then can we please just go back to Jamrock now? We rule, we rule, we rule. Yep. Victory! Aw. fun time yeah uh let's get to the subs while this is going on okay
Uh, Mighty Greg Doge has come back for the 23rd month saying, Woo, go capitalism, smash the system. On your back for three months. Welcome back. Deporua, Deporua has come back for the third month saying 52 hertz conversation. Garfi 400, 70 months, nice plus one. Zale 250 has come back for the 64th month. Just got this game in the Steam sale. Looking forward to playing it through myself. Not him again. 102 months. MMS or MM Sword just subbed. Hey, thank you. The color 12. 30 months. Thank you. Terracotta Geek has come back for the 17th month. Much, much appreciated. PK Jester, 63 months. Ominously Ominous has come back for the 89th month. Thank you. Max L. Silver, 45 months. Thank you. Duck Duck Glitch has come back for the 25th month. Much appreciated. Damaris, 1034. Thank you for your 78 months. And Kikaz Duke has come back for the 31st month, saying thank you for your years of service and brightening my day when I'm feeling blue. Hey, we do our best. Mm hmm. So stick around. Uh, at 5.30, we, and uh, I accept myself from this because I messed up, we'll be playing uh, Warhammer 40k Kill Team. I think it's just at 5. Is it just at 5? Ooh, Pretty I should sure. let you go then. <laughs> That's why I said, yeah, it's at 5. Um, I have to go set up for, for Kill Team. I've never played, so this will be fun. I'm, I can't wait to watch. And yeah. I'm, I'm sad I'm not there, but I fell down kind of hard on this one and wasn't able to get my kill team finished. Mm. Uh, but, oh, Gap Filler, thank you for that 32-month resub. Oh, yeah. But I'm really looking forward to seeing everyone's, uh, everyone's armies painted, or everyone's kill team painted. Indeed. So... Anything else? Uh, we have not announced what we're playing next for Talking Sim, so keep an eye on the schedule. Hmm. And it'll go there. All right. Hmm. That's everything. Yes. Beowulf has posted a message from Stev from, from Jacob's hmm. orc team. Yeah, uh, now so I feel like... like God, Jesus. Now I feel that I've got to film my own. Uh... Sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Hi, everybody. Woo! Sorry about that. All right. Yeah. I'm ready to go do some murder now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye. Later, everyone. See you in a bit.